Today, we're installing the PowerPC version of Windows NT4 on a Power Mac G3, something that was previously impossible. But there's been an incredible new hack, so I do believe we're building a reverse 90s Hackintosh. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy the unrelenting pursuit of installing weird crap on old computers, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. A few days ago, I got a message from my friend Colin Mister. It was a short video clip showing a PowerBook G3 chiming and then booting directly into Windows NT. Now, for some context, Microsoft released versions of Windows NT for many different architectures like ARM, Alpha, MIPS, and PowerPC. The thing is, it was never released for PowerPC Macintosh. Over the years, many tried to get it working because, well, it should have been possible. In fact, Windows NT for the Macintosh was considered all but inevitable back in the day until it wound up being vaporware. But finally, we can live the dream of the 90s thanks to the genius of user Wacko on GitHub, which I will certainly link down in the description if you wanna try this absolute wizardry for yourself. So what is actually released on that GitHub page are tiny ISO images that you burn to a CD-ROM, which can boot the Mac and have the loaders, which will get Windows NT to install. So you're also going to need Windows NT4 install media, of which I have here a completely legitimate copy. And we will be swapping back and forth between these two disks a bit. And there are some additional caveats. We need to do some internal drive juggling to get this to work because only one of these IDE ports will work with this hack method currently, and that's the IDE port which is connecting the CD-ROM drive. The other IDE port is on a different IDE controller that is not compatible, and my particular G3 here is booting off of a SCSI hard drive currently attached to this SCSI card. That also will not work. All right, I've got my big bin of random IDE hard drives. I'm sure everybody has one of these. And conveniently, the IDE cable with the optical drive up here has a connector we can use. Disk drive in here. And since we need an ADB keyboard, I'm gonna be using this lovely Apple extended keyboard. So now we need to boot from the ISO we burned from the GitHub page. Just hold down C and jump cut to sometime in the future because a new version of this loader has been released, 0.04, which actually unquirkifies a lot of the quirks in this install. So I'm making the executive decision to toss out a whole bunch of footage and start over with this 0.04. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Mysterium VPN. It's no mystery what sets Mysterium apart from traditional VPN providers. It's decentralized, powered by over 20,000 individual web users around the world. Mysterium is a leader in decentralized VPN technology, which offers a lot of advantages over other more traditional providers. Instead of just connecting to a giant farm of cloud servers run by a VPN company, you're connecting through real residential IP addresses hosted by people. It's a peer-to-peer -peer architecture that not only mimics real-world users to the services you're accessing, but prevents Mysterium from even being able to log your activity. Beyond that, Mysterium offers military-grade encryption. Using Mysterium VPN, you can finally truly say goodbye to those this content is not available in your region messages. It's super easy to get started. So make privacy your superpower by grabbing the best possible deal at mistvpn.net slash action. And don't forget to use my promo code action for an additional 15% discount. Link down in my description below. Okay, so upon first booting from that ISO image that we downloaded from GitHub. We have these three options here, run a program, run firmware setup, 
and restart system. And we can see we have detected this hard drive here, HD00. The first thing we need to do is run firmware setup, <laughs> repartition the disk for NT installation. And of course we do have the limitations of this old school Apple IDE in that we have to put the OS within the first eight gigabytes. So I'm gonna give NT four gigabytes. Then we will create a Mac partition for a dual boot setup. Well, just to be safe, 3,500. All right, it reboots automatically now. Hold down C to make sure you boot off of that CD again. And yeah, there's all of our new partitions. All right, now we need to do some disk swapping. While this is up, we're going to pop out the GitHub ISO and put in our totally legitimate Windows NT4 workstation install disk. We'll give it a second to spin up. And then we're gonna choose run a program and we'll type CD colon backslash PPC backslash setup LDR. And I spelled it wrong. Try that again. Setup LDR. <laughs> Windows NT setup. Already this feels cursed. All right, Windows NT could not determine the type of computer we have, so we can hit other and then press enter here. And now we'll look at this ridiculous list. Windows NT setup and we'll choose Power Macintosh G3. We'll have to specify some drivers here under other Mac IO IDE controller. And then once again, S other enter Power Mac general HID and storage. With both of those drivers loaded, we can now press enter to continue. And again, Windows NT does not know what kind of video driver we have. So other enter open firmware frame buffer. And now we're booting into the actual Windows NT installer. <laughs> All right, to set up Windows NT now, press enter. Don't mind if I do. The uh, end user license agreement, I'm sure we're not in any sort of uh, violation of that. I'm gonna have to change the keyboard here. Pointing device is other. Oh look, here's our drive. There's C, NTFS. Yep, that's the right one. Yeah, sure, format it. Looking pretty good. <laughs> it's doing it. It's doing it. Oh my God. <laughs> this is absolutely hilarious. We are really in Windows NT setup. All right, typical. Okay. Windows NT4 has been installed correctly. <laughs> Let's see if it boots. Look at this. Have you ever seen something so cursed? We really have Windows NT running natively on a Power Mac G3. Let's see what about this system says. Look at that. Power Macintosh with a half a gig of RAM. <laughs> Now there's not a whole lot actually installed on here. By default, we've got some accessories, a oh, CD player. I don't think audio works. Nope. Uh, no games or anything, but I think we can grab some games off of the install disc. All right, let's look on the install CD here. Browse this CD, add remove software. Ah, uh, here we go, games, which include pinball. Excellent. Absolutely, we're gonna install these games. Oh, uh, we've got games. We've got 3D pinball. <laughs> Living our Windows dreams. Except that I don't know how to, ah, uh, here we go. Oh yeah, this works. Just look at that. 3D Space Cadet pinball <laughs> on a Power Mac G3. 
Okay, I'm slightly curious what happens if we try to run x86 software on here because I'm pretty sure there's an emulation layer. I think it's only 16-bit, but let's try to run Dark Forces for PC and see what happens. Yeah, this is actually a DOS game. I don't know that this is going to work. It's actually running the installer. So this is now running x86 software. Oh my god, it's running Dark Forces. It's working. This is magic and it crashed. This is shocking. It is running an x86 game. Well, momentarily, it, it then crashes. But it's running. Software it should never be running. But it is freaking working. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, it crashed. All right, I was trying to open a disk full of shareware and got my first application error here from good old Dr. Watson, explorer.exe. Hmm. I think we may need a restart. Okay, I got out my most exciting software, Developmental Biology, an interactive CD-ROM. And what's going on on that cover there? Hmm. And hilariously, this is both Windows and Mac compatible. All right, it does not seem to want to run this setup. So maybe this stuff is 32-bit and the DOS game ran because it was 16-bit. Kind of makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so I put a Mac OS 9 install CD in here. I was gonna try to dual boot from that hard drive, but it's only giving me the option to initialize that disk, which will erase everything, including the Windows NT install. So I don't know if I accidentally formatted all of the partitions as NTFS and got rid of that Mac partition. But yeah, currently can't dual boot that way, but we do have another way. Hold on a second. I can just reconnect that SCSI hard drive. There we go. Dual booting. Mac OS from a SCSI disk and Windows NT from IDE. How ridiculous. All right, check it out. As it sits now, this is a triple boot system. By default, we'll boot up into macOS 9.2. We also have 10.2 on here. And if we want to boot into Windows NT, it's a little bit hidden. We actually have to boot off of the weird hack CD-ROM that we burned. And then select Start Windows NT Workstation from this list here, which will boot us into the hard drive install. After which we can remove the CD. Nice. Okay, so this is so freaking cool, and it's my absolute favorite kind of hack. Getting something weird to work just for the sake of getting it to work. I mean, what reason could you possibly have to actually want to run Windows NT4 on a PowerPC Macintosh? But I think what I want to do next is get this booting on an iMac G3. I think that will be so hilarious. But there is one big roadblock. You see, I glossed over some of the uh, idiosyncrasies with this install, uh, one of them being a very, very short list of compatible machines. And some of those compatible machines are compatible with the big asterisk. You see, USB does not work in Windows NT on Power Mac. Only ADB does. So although it will technically boot on a tray loading iMac G3, that machine doesn't actually have an ADB port. Well, you can actually hack one in. And that's what I plan on doing. So make sure you stick around if you want to see more weird Windows NT on PowerPC Macintosh shenanigans. In any event, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of whatever the heck this was, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Drew Hamlin, Frodo Jedi, Gaspar Heller, George Rosansky, Graham, Greg from Hrutkane Mods, James Fryman, 
James Laurie, Jason Papaz, Jason Ezel, Camille Rakowski, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Nick Daniels, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, Unknown Soldier 41, Veronica Explains, and Xantronics Industrial, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.